Hello, Salome. Thank you for coming. Hi, Astra. It's a pleasure, and it's great to see you again. Um, I wanted to, maybe before we start, you can tell more about who you are, what you do, because I have I have found that usually you are the best person to describe what you do. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm a business consultant and longevity strategist, and my focus is really to help businesses. Well, uh, I remember a coach telling me, never say help people, say you teach them. Mm. <laughs> because, you know, not everybody responds well to the mm. word help. Mm. Um, so, do, do you know uh, why is it like that? I, I think it's because um, instinctively humans, um, their first thought is, well, I don't think I need help. But if oh. you can teach me something new, I'm more receptive to that. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so yeah, that's what she always says. Always say teach, mm -hmm. not, not help. So that was her thought, at least. Mm -hmm. So, um, and recently someone asked me, um, what does longevity really mean? Mm -hmm. um, why does uh, um, a, a business owner or a corporation needs someone to tell me about longevity. Mm -hmm. And what I always say is um, longevity is really about what the business um, is prepared to offer the world and for how long um, as a business. Um, it, it's no accident that 95% mm -hmm. um, of businesses are uh, failing or failed because um, when you when they typically businesses start out not really thinking about I want to be in business um, ad infinitum and I want to make this kind mm -hmm. of impact on the world they just go into into a business for the money mm -hmm. um, you know I want to be successful but they're not necessarily thinking long, long term. And um, being that business that everyone connects with. So when mm -hmm. you hear that name, you're like, oh, you know, it, it's kind of like a household name. Mm -hmm. So everyone connects with it, resonates with it. Um, and, you know, those businesses are, um, they're going to be around for a long time. They may change. Um, um, to adjust to maybe um, globalization mm -hmm. or or um, just what's going on in the, in the world economy, but they're not really gonna gonna change that much mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because I find successful businesses um, tend to be more proactive than reactive because mm -hmm. when you're reactive, <laughs> the 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 horse has already gone through the gate and you're reacting. <laughs> reacting to it whereas if you're a proactive business um you know you're always um anticipating what might mm -hmm. or might not happen mm -hmm. um uh, but i digress um uh, a little bit <laughs> you asked me you know to talk about introduce myself so as i said i'm a consultant and strategist and my ultimate goal is really to um well, first of all, I created a, a longevity blueprint. And mm -hmm. what that is, is a roadmap, really, for um, businesses. It, it, the goal is to help them identify those areas in their businesses that is preventing them from, mm -hmm. <clears throat> from thriving, from surviving, from succeeding mm -hmm. and, um, and um, achieving longevity. Mm -hmm. But I find that if you go even further back, um, the reason, um, the, the need for a longevity um, strategist or for someone who, who wants, um, is there to help you make sure you achieve longevity is really from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have a strong foundation, I don't care um, if you're making millions of dollars eventually the, the foundation yeah. start to crack 
and eventually mm -hmm. you're going to go out of business because you didn't have the correct foundation to start. And by that, I mean, as, as a business, you, you have to be um, laser focused on um, what your culture is. Mm -hmm. What are your core, um, what are your core values? Mm -hmm. um, what do you stand for as a business? Because everything you do in your business should revolve around what your culture is. Yeah. Um, it, the people you hire should support mm -hmm. the culture. Um, uh, your, your, um, how you deal with your suppliers, everything you do mm -hmm. in your business. And, and, and I wanna use um, maybe Apple as an example. Mm -hmm. Um, as you know, Apple is a is a um, high end <laughs> phone company, but Apple doesn't really sell phones, do they? Yeah. What they sell is the experience and uh, um, how it makes the customer feel. Mm -hmm. um, as an Apple user myself, you're always excited mm -hmm. <clears throat> when when you it, it, Apple just has to whisper <laughs> yeah. that there's something coming. And the whole world is in a tizzy about what it is, what is it coming? I want one, you know? So um, that to me is a perfect example of, of, a, of a company that is laser focused on its culture mm -hmm. and everything else yeah. um, emanates from that. And that drives what they do in their, in their company, whether it's their marketing, hiring, um, you know, how they deal with um, the community, um, mm -hmm. how do they give back, everything revolves around that. So it, it, a company that keeps that, uh, I find um, one area that I think a lot of companies struggle with is, let's say you start a business and you decide, I'm going to sell widgets. Mm -hmm. And these widgets are going to... <clears throat> these widgets are going to um, prevent you from getting sick, but mm -hmm. whatever it is. And then you, you launch it, it's on the market, you know, people are interested, um, but it's not doing as well as you thought. And um, if immediately the mindset is, <clears throat> well, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. Um, maybe I should switch. Maybe this, maybe that. And then they change to something else or they switch the approach to what they're offering. Mm -hmm. And guess what happens then is you're virtually starting over because yeah. now you have to be telling the client a different message. Mm -hmm. And if, if you're constantly doing that, then, then the boat is kind of rocky <laughs> because yeah. you're not you know, laser yeah. focused on um, Instead of changing, ask the question, what do I do to make this approach more pleasing to the client? Mm -hmm. And how can, what, yeah. other, what strategies can I put in place yeah. to, to make it more appealing rather than saying, oh, I'm doing, you know, it's wrong. Let me change. Mm -hmm. Let me do this, or or the competition is doing that. So let me follow them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, 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 that's all yeah. reactive. Strategy. So how do you how do you come up with that one main approach? Because I think that's where a lot of times you, you kind of start this one thing and you try it out and you see it doesn't work, or you need to pivot or something like that. But but I I hear that you're talking about pretty much going from the beginning that you actually come up with this strategy that you either know is going to work or you have somebody help you come up with this strategy. How do you even find that like best strategy or the main approach to focus on? Well, I don't think it's that you can't change. It's mm -hmm. not that you can't make changes. Yeah. It's that your main, your, your culture should not change. Oh, okay. Your, your foundation should not change. You can make um, adjustments to what you're um, doing, your business, your mm -hmm. offering, um, but you can't change who you are as a company, Okay, you know, midstream, mm -hmm. because if you're constantly doing that, then, you know, 
you confuse your client and you confuse the marketplace because mm -hmm. they're like, what is this? What does this company really represent? Mm -hmm. So you, you want to make sure that that doesn't change. Um, someone who, listening to me might say, well, what she's saying is nonsense because business is dynamic and, mm -hmm. and you, you, by dint of the fact that business is dynamic means it's constantly changing, mm -hmm. you know, whether, you know, a few years back, we weren't so um, technology focused or we weren't, you know, <clears throat> doing things remotely. Exactly. We weren't doing what we were doing now. Everything was face to face. Mm -hmm. So businesses have had to adapt to a changing environment, to how they do business, et cetera, et cetera. But the company's culture itself didn't mm -hmm. change. So, so that's the goal. So that's one of the, one of the things, um, uh, one of how reasons why you need to focus yeah. on, on longevity from yeah. that perspective mm -hmm. so how do you even this how do you build a culture because i think most of the people know that culture is important culture really is important we we, we know it we hear about it but how do you even decide what kind of culture you want how do you build it how do you sustain it over mm -hmm. a long time yeah, it really comes down to core values because the core values feed into the culture. Mm -hmm. So, for example, let's say you're, I don't know, maybe a tobacco company, mm -hmm. but but you're, um, and you, everyone knows that tobacco is harmful mm -hmm. to the smoker, but we still have cigarettes, right? But um, <clears throat> If you decide as a company, you know, I'm going to do the research to make sure that what I'm offering to the customer is, is, um, is acceptable, or I'm going to give back to the community um, to um, address issues um, my, uh, my marketplace might have related to smoking. Mm -hmm. So th those things make the company stand, you stand, you now stand for something. Mm -hmm. So whenever, let's say the company's name is Astra, when you hear the name Astra, even though it's about cigarettes, mm -hmm. you know that Astra really cares about come about not just their um, marketplace, but they 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 change, they care about community. So you say, how do you um, develop culture? It's about those core values. Mm -hmm. uh, you, Astra, um, make sure you hire people who have integrity, who are committed, who mm -hmm. are who believe strongly in team. Um, uh, these are people that are not just your employees, that they are your teammates. Um, you allow them to have a voice, a say mm -hmm. um, in, in how the company um, operates or, or um, what, um, what other things they need to include or exclude. Um, so every, all of that builds, feeds into establishing a strong mm -hmm. culture. Um, and, you know, I find um, people always go back to um, Silicon Valley um, and talk about the freedom that when you think Silicon Valley, Valley it's really um, an area that, that fosters creativity in people. It's where you have all these entrepreneurs who are coming up with um, out of the box idea, they're constantly innovating so there's a there's a environment of freedom, mm -hmm. you know. People are giving given the latitude to to think and and innovate, and they're constantly mm -hmm. they don't have any boundaries. So that culture is more of a freedom culture. Whereas in a corporation, it's this is how we're doing it. There's no deviation from mm -hmm. it. 
um, you, you, this employee is responsible for that. Um, <clears throat> I expect you to be here at eight. You can't leave before five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a more structured culture. Yeah. And, and, you know, everyone knows, everyone within that culture knows this is what is expected. Mm -hmm. So it's a more structured culture. Whereas with an Apple or country um, co corporate companies um, that are the same, have a more free flowing um inclusive culture mm -hmm. so so yeah it's really the core values so as a company or as a potential business owner you have to first determine what core mm -hmm. value what are the core value what is, what is your company going to stand for mm -hmm. and, and that's not to say they're not focusing or also thinking about um revenues or mm -hmm. make money the challenge for the business owner is how do you integrate the two? Mm -hmm. And my view is if you have a strong, uh, if you have strong core values that feed into your, um, into your culture, you don't have mm -hmm. to worry so much about the, the, the revenues because mm -hmm. by dint of what you're doing translates into revenues mm -hmm. and success. And yeah. you're not constantly reinventing the wheel because you really are focused in mm -hmm. on this is what yeah. I want to achieve. Yeah. This is, I just was thinking about something that you mentioned in the beginning about when in longevity pretty much involves you thinking long-term, like thinking mm -hmm. years and years ahead. And right. how do you not get overwhelmed by it where it can mm -hmm. pretty much freeze you and you don't take any action? Because I think many times, when people think about this big vision or big future or this big company they want to build, they might feel overwhelmed to the level where they don't even take any action towards it. Or they just think of so many options that they could do or which directions they could go, but they just can't decide on, on one main thing. What, that, how can you that, avoid it? That overwhelm? That's, why you, that's why you need someone like me. <laughs> <laughs> Really, you because yeah. you as a business owner want to be focused on day-to-day -day operations, mm -hmm. your supply chain, you know, productivity, um, all of this stuff. You're, you, it, it's difficult, as you say, for for someone to really have um, a longevity plan mm -hmm. built in. They should, but that's not the norm nowadays. Mm -hmm. The norm nowadays is productivity, revenue, supply chain, you know, uh, all of that. Let's mm -hmm. make money. But yes. <clears throat> it's kind of like networking. Uh, and <laughs> you mentioned that at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, people always rush to networking when their business isn't doing well. Mm -hmm. They yeah. say, let me go. Uh, what am I not doing right? Oh, I need to do more networking. Yeah rather than making networking something that you do regardless, mm -hmm. automatically. It should be it, it, next to um, what I'm talking about, networking should be part of your longevity plan. Mm -hmm. you, you, If you're in business and you're not work, networking, you're dead. And if you're not, you're going to be because networking, what networking does is it, it's constantly filling up your funnel. Mm -hmm. So these are people you may not do business with today or tomorrow mm -hmm. or next week, but they become your connection and you start building these relationships that can't mm -hmm. but help your, your company in the future. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, you, you, it's, go, it's hard, especially for someone who's new. Yeah. And you, you make a very good point. Yeah. If you're an entrepreneur who's new coming into the business realm, and it, it, you sometimes don't have a clue and, and nobody teaches longevity. Yeah. Um, uh, people teach you how to set up a business, you know, the, the core things, you know, setting up a corporation, um, uh, I'm gonna do this kind of marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So it, they're focused on, um funding marketing just the basics of business mm -hmm. but nobody's teaching you um number one 
about core values and culture and the importance of having these as part of your foundation. Mm -hmm. So how does it, and, and, and it can become overwhelming. So that's why you need someone who is going to, and that's why I created the blueprint because it, the roadmap is not something that's, it's exactly that. It's not something that's immediate. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're traveling along a road, you're taking different steps. Mm -hmm. And the first step is the foundation. And then come the next step, mm -hmm. and the next step, and the next step, and the next step. And it's, it's, um, it's important that businesses um, have that mindset number one mm -hmm. of, um, I need to be thinking long-term, but as I said, not, not most businesses don't think like that though. Yeah. And, and this is part of my goal is to get more businesses to, to start thinking about longevity when they start a business along mm -hmm. with the funding and the, and, and the, you know, the marketing and the supply chain and thinking about, you know, how am I going to stay in business? Um, those are immediate things. Mm -hmm. But once you settle in as a business, you then need to be thinking, okay, now I'm here. How do I get to there? Mm -hmm. and, um, so a couple of things that are important to longevity. Um, and uh, one for me is, is complacency. Mm -hmm. um, because um, people often ask me, you know, as a longevity strategist, um, what kind of businesses are you focused on? Mm -hmm. And I think they expect it to be, you know, mostly startups, but... <clears throat> You've had multiple businesses who have it or established and who were um, quote unquote um, one of those businesses that you recognize immediately when you hear the name. Mm -hmm. And one of those was Blockbuster. I don't know if you mm -hmm. know what Blockbuster no. is. They were the, you know, you could, they were the moving people, mm -hmm. the go to for movies. Yeah. And, and Netflix comes along and, and they're out of the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, complacency, because they thought we have it, we have it pat. We don't have to worry about mm -hmm. doing anything new. We don't have to innovate. We don't have to do anything different. We can just continue doing what we're doing because everybody mm -hmm. comes to us mm -hmm. when, when they think about yeah. And it's working. And exactly. So why why change if it's working? Mm -hmm. But but that's the complacency business gets mm -hmm. into. When they're doing well, they feel there's no need to mm -hmm. really look closely into their business as to as to what are the what what are my customers expecting next? Mm -hmm. And that's what Apple is so good at. Mm -hmm. Is they're constantly thinking what else can we bring to the marketplace that's new and exciting mm -hmm. and get everybody excited to come in and buy more phones mm -hmm. when you don't really need a phone? The one you have yeah. works perfectly fine, but because <laughs> they're constantly innovating and they may be giving you, um, uh, making one slight tweak, they may be <laughs> giving you a, a, a faster speed or maybe an enhanced camera mm -hmm. well did, did, uh, it's not something I really need but you can't resist the urge yeah. to go see what it is mm -hmm. with this new phone so yeah it, it, one is complacency yeah. and um well before you go further I have a question about you said yeah. which is brilliant about thinking about what your customers will expect next. Is there a way how you can actually determine that or know that what is it that they might be expecting next? Well, depends the business you're in. For example, for me as a coach, um, focusing on longevity, mm -hmm. I'm constantly thinking, um, what can I, how can I differentiate myself mm -hmm. from all the other coaches out there. Mm -hmm. What makes me different? What makes someone want to say, Salome, it's you I want to work with? Mm -hmm. 
So I'm constantly thinking about how can I make this business or this business owner better? How can I make them stronger? How can I, um, what can I teach them that's going to make their business stand out? And a big part of that comes from researching the marketplace, not just locally, but internationally, globally. You have to know what's going on and, and see what other people are doing, what other companies are doing. And this is why networking is so important because you get to hear what other people are thinking mm -hmm. and saying in your space, in other areas. And sometimes it might be just one little thing that you hear and you say, hmm, no. I can do that. Uh, for me, um, you know, a client came, uh, reached out to me the other day and, and she came up with this product that um, she wants to take globally. Um, mm -hmm. Very, very innovative, very, something that, you know, I, I wouldn't have thought of, but mm -hmm. I'm not in her industry. Yeah. But the point is, she says, well, someone referred me to you and I don't know exactly how you can help me. <laughs> so immediately I'm thinking, okay, this is our product. What does she need to do to make it, um, to make it just mm -hmm. take our business to the next level? So I, I think it comes with and not everybody, to be honest, Asta, has that skill mm -hmm. because it's a skill. You know, yeah. to think out of the box, out of the box thinking is a skill and not everyone mm -hmm. has it. That's why there are some people who are, um, who can invent something and you say, well, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> you know, or someone will come up with an idea and you say, that's a good idea. Why didn't I think of that? So, so it's a skill and it's something you have to, uh, as someone in my position, you have to constantly sharpen. But, but the best way I can explain it is for me, I'm always thinking, um, what can I give to this client that's going to make their business better mm -hmm. and, and, and make them different from everyone else? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you... Um, well, refresh me again on the on your question. I already forgot. I was so focused on listening to you. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, like I said, how 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 do they? How do you make the client better? How do you, I remember the question now. about expectations? Um, yeah, client yeah. expectations. Yeah. It, it's it's clients don't know they have expectations. Number. Oh. One. <laughs> they don't know they they're 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 poised and they're excited and they're you know mm. they're responsive to what's new and what's yeah. coming so in a way you can but kind of create their expectations create, exactly oh, okay you can create the expectation because if i'm if i go to the the grocery store to buy olive oil I yeah. just go to buy olive oil. I don't have any expectations about mm -hmm. that other than it's supposedly healthy for me. But if mm -hmm. someone um, has a new olive oil on the market that says, hey, this olive oil is, um, it, it, it's not just organic, you know, it, it's, 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 it's sourced um, in a healthy way. You know, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have a lot of additives and they have the marketing surrounding it. Mm -hmm. it then, then I have expectations, you know, I, I, and I start looking at the other olive oil on the market in mm -hmm. a different way, because now my expectations and my, my knowledge is heightened about what mm -hmm. olive oil should be. And now that you were talking about it, I was thinking that if you set certain expectation, let's say as a business, as a service, mm -hmm. how do you maybe deal with that? Because usually people expect it to get better and better and better. Mm -hmm. Is there a way how to deal with that pressure that you might feel from, I have to get better and better and better all the time? That it's in a way like it's it's really never ending process. It is never ending. And and that's why I say it's, it's business is dynamic. But as a business, you don't have to get into that and go down the rabbit hole 
of better, mm -hmm. better, better, yeah. better all the time. Offer quality, offer what your client wants. Don't focus so much on the better, better, better. Yeah. You know, for Apple, it's not about better, better, better. It's client expectation mm -hmm. that is satisfying and what the client, how it makes you feel. Um, do you ever notice um, how when people walk around, if you're ever in a shopping mall, mm -hmm. nobody ever looks up anymore. Mm. Everybody, everybody's hand is attached to a phone whether it's Apple or something else. Mm -hmm. And why are they walking around with the phone in their hand? Because they want everybody to see it, mm. right? They want um, the next person to say, hey, that person's hand is attached to the, the latest and the greatest iPhone. So it, it's also about um, how you're viewed as a customer mm -hmm. and you want to impress. Yeah. So, so it's also like a status. It's thing. a status symbol. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so which comes back again to cut to your culture and your core values, mm -hmm. you know, app, one of Apple's is providing with that status mm -hmm. symbol. Now you Astra as what you offer your client. Um, the main thing for you is to, if you're offering value, if you're, um, if you're satisfying your client's needs, mm -hmm. and you can you can introduce them to new ways of doing things that works for their particular business. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I'm going to give you the best way for me to explain would be to give you an example. So um, one of my clients um, has this product. Um, that she's trying to launch um, and she you know she wants to know well like you thinking about you know constantly changing improving mm -hmm. doing this that and the other and uh, you know my my thing is focus on um, when your product is in the marketplace wait to see how it is mm. received before yeah. you're all before you're automatically thinking yeah. what am I going to be doing yeah. next um too much so in a way it's about like making educated uh decisions educated guesses yes yeah. educated decisions and you do that very well because you're always checking the analytics and mm -hmm. the numbers of people who are really engaging with you and, and that's mm -hmm. very important and that's one of the things I like so much about YouTube is you really see down to the minutest detail who's watching your videos mm -hmm. why are they watching your videos what areas are they in mm -hmm. what, what demographic are they female male age group um, how much do they earn so you you can really narrow down mm -hmm. you know who you should be targeting but but I um, I think it's, and I'm going to claim it, it's a gift of mine, I mm -hmm. think, that I can really um, uh, come up with ideas and strategies that is unique to, mm -hmm. to every client of mine, because I, it, it's just one of my strengths. Um, I invented a couple um, products. Mm -hmm. um, I was about I, to ask you about it when you were talking about thinking really? outside of the box because you yeah. definitely are one of those people because you have yeah. two patents. Yeah, so I I have two patents and um, to do to get something patented, I, I look at it as an achievement, even though mm -hmm. it's not yet on the market. Because to get something patented, it has to be unique. It has to be yeah. different. It has to be something. Nobody, it's that's not on the market. Mm -hmm. It has to do something differently from what's being done. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it, it, it's as I said before, coming up with ways to innovate, you know, help your clients do something new is a skill. And that's why not everybody is a coach. That that's mm -hmm. why not everybody can do what you do yeah. or what I do. And, and like I said, it's my goal to really open the eyes of businesses mm -hmm. to the importance of, of um, having longevity strategies mm -hmm. and really putting that blueprint 
uh, making it one of the pillars mm -hmm. of their businesses um, and, and being conscientious. But if you have to have a staff member or a team member, be responsible or be someone that that oversees um, that area of your business, I think it's mm -hmm. worth the investment because mm -hmm. it, it, what's more important than than surviving in business, you know, yeah. and it doesn't have to be something huge and grandiose. It can be just one little thing. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're a salon owner, there are millions of salons around the place. Why should someone come to your salon? Well, maybe it's because when you come in for a pedicure, the, 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 the little flip-flops that I put on your feet are different. It's something you can actually keep for yourself. Mm -hmm. or, or it's that when you come in, uh, I give you, uh, you get a cup of um, coffee or mm -hmm. you get... Um, some some organic juice, something that's different that makes you memorable in the minds mm -hmm. of the client. And it, you know, while they're waiting, you, you know, you might, you know, even if there's not a TV to watch, you want some your client to be engaged and entertained so mm -hmm. that they don't get annoyed while they're waiting. So it it, it could just be something mm -hmm. really different. Yeah. Maybe maybe you give them, you know, a magazine to take away rather than they read it and they leave it, you know. So mm -hmm. it, it could be multiple different ways for mm -hmm. you to come up with. And, and not everybody is skilled in that area. And that's why mm -hmm. you have people who hire marketing companies or strategists or um, different people who are skilled in certain areas. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of what I offer. Mm -hmm. I had, a, as you were speaking, I was thinking about how, what is the story or how did you get to realizing how important the longevity is? How did you get to that realization? Because you, this is something that you help others with. It's really important. And now after you're explaining it, it's obvious that like this is important. But how how did you get to that realization that this is important and even came up with your own blueprint? Yeah, well, one realization is personal and one is not. Mm -hmm. And and I'll start with the one that's not. Um, it goes back to the statistic of the 95% who are failing or have failed um, in business. And the light bulb went off for me um, regarding that statistic a couple months ago, uh, I started thinking, why is that so high? Mm -hmm. um, it it, it kind of didn't make sense. But then I started thinking about it. Um, the, the statistic and the um, business, business experts say it takes you three to five years um, to start really seeing success in, when you start a new business. And we all know most people aren't going to stick around three to five years. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work year one. They say, nah, I'll give it another year. Year no. two, it's not working. Year three, they're still not making money. What do they do? They give up and start something new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that, that speaks to the, the, why the statistic is, is just out of control. Mm -hmm. um, there's no... Um, there's new business owners don't have that. And that's one of the things I teach, the ability to stick with it. Be, know that challenges should be expected, not accepted. Mm -hmm. So if you're in business, one of the things you should be absolutely um, aware of and, and, and have in the back of your mind, there are going to be challenges. Mm -hmm. But if you are of the mindset that they're going to come, then, then you're prepared mentally already. Mm -hmm. yeah. for or at least challenges. you're not surprised when they happen. It, exactly, exactly. So it's not that you have to accept 
Mm -hmm. um, these challenges and start freaking out about them, but be in a, a mindset of expectation. If, if, if they don't come, then, then great. But I don't know of any business, whether new, growing, expanding, mm -hmm. that doesn't have challenges. So it, it, just be in a, uh, have your mindset be one that, hey, it's going to come. What am I going to do when it, when it comes? Um, and not be, um, and that goes back to being proactive rather than reactive. Um, and the personally, uh, I, it's because of my experience when I started a business is I didn't have all of these in place. I, I didn't have the right foundation. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing. And this is why I wrote the book because mm -hmm. I didn't want, um, well, I was trying to, to help or teach <laughs> um, <laughs> everyone who wants to get into um, a business, start a business, uh, grow their business, not make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you're, you know, as I said earlier, every time something doesn't go your way, you want to change rather than being in a mindset, oh, I'm going to be committed to this. And this is my culture that I've established based on my core values. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what I'm going to, to, to focus on and work on. And maybe I need to tweak this a little and that a little, but you don't need a wholesale change. Yeah of everything and starting over. If, mm -hmm. you, if you're you committed at the beginning, then um, then yes, you can help but be successful. But, but these are strategies that you really need to hone in on uh, in order for your business to, to be successful. You have to be focused on people. People talk about short-term and long-term goals, but, but long-term is not the same as longevity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, long-term could be 10 years from now. Um, short-term is usually immediate. Long-term is mm -hmm. usually, you know, post five years. Um, longevity, as I said, is a business that is um, one that is in the, in the conscious mind. It's in the it's in the um, it's in the DNA of the business mm -hmm. world. Um, who do you think of when you're thinking um, great business minds? It's Warren Buffett comes to mm -hmm. mind. Um, why is Warren Buffett always in the forefront? Because the guy knows what he's doing, and he's in the forefront. And if you listen to him speak. It it's kind of mirrors what I'm saying about stop trying to get here mm -hmm. on day one. Yeah. <laughs> because when you try to get here on day one, that's that's a that's just a re recipe yeah. for failure. And you yeah. may you may get make some money um on day 10 and day 20, but yeah. come come day 300, it's not working for you. Because because you 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 jumped on the bright shiny um, banner, <laughs> you jumped on the bright shiny thing, and you didn't think about the basics. Mm -hmm. Being what are what is your foundation? Yeah, gotta go back to that. Yeah. So, Even as you were talking, as yeah. you were talking about the that it literally like first five years. Most of the time, businesses fail. I wrote mm -hmm. down two things, which are patience and persistence. Yeah, and I think we we I think now it's these two things are kind of dying out because we get everything instantly. Exactly. So whatever you want, you get it, get it yeah. right now, and they want and that way you kind of lose that idea of yeah, exactly, yeah. and and that way you lose that I even the concept of patience where you actually have to wait for something, but most mm -hmm. of the things in life that actually are worth it, or even like building business or building relationships, things like that, they mm -hmm. take time. It's not something that will happen overnight. And same with persistence. You, it, It's not enough that you do it for a week. You have to do it over and over and over. And a lot of times 
do it over and over without any um seemingly visible yeah, results yeah, yeah. and how do you is there a way or what kind of mindset should the persons have to keep going let's say in those first years when they seemingly are failing or they're not getting results that they would want do you know even like in your experience what has helped you let's say as you would in the beginning you would maybe struggle or something is hard or you're still like figuring it out what mm-hmm. helps you to keep going? What What is it in the mindset that helps you keep going, even though seemingly nothing really goes right? <laughs> well, first of all, as you said, you have to be persistent and committed. But how do you get to the yeah. to, those, to those things? The commitment and the um, and the persistence. Mm-hmm. And the simple answer is not everyone's meant to be mm. um, an entrepreneur or a business owner Mm -hmm. you have to be willing to risk it all and if you're willing to risk everything then you have no choice but Mm -hmm. to be persistent and committed because your belief in yourself in is of such that it's going to work Mm -hmm. and if you're not of that mindset that it's going to work then being a business owner or entrepreneur maybe is not the right thing for mm-hmm. you. Um, some people can get there with coaching. Mm-hmm. Others can get there if they have a good mentor. Mm-hmm. So if, if you are starting out, and that's one of the things I highly recommend to, is having a good, a really good mentor. That's worth its weight in gold. Mm-hmm. But But you, the person, already have to be of that mindset where... I'm risking everything. When I started my business, I was working for um, I was working for a municipality in my mm. state, in my city. Um, great, good paying job, good benefits. Um, you know, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I wasn't happy, and uh, um, I asked myself. Uh, if I don't do it, when, if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? Mm -hmm. What am I waiting for? Is this what you want to be doing? Um, um, Five years from now, if I'm in the same place, is this, you know, will I be um, fulfilled Mm -hmm. and and, and gratified? And and those are some of the questions that you need to ask. Mm -hmm. Um, How do you know? And, and, that's how you know mm-hmm. if you if you if you do do like I did I just got up one day and said this was it um and even though I had challenges along the way and I can't tell you how many people that I know of that do what I did and then go straight back mm-hmm. to, to having a job <laughs> because because they weren't willing to risk it they weren't mm-hmm. willing to take the risk. They weren't committed to whatever the mm-hmm. cause or the purpose was. Yeah. And they weren't, um, they weren't prepared for, for that mm-hmm. persistence yeah. of commitment. Yeah. And what, do, what do you think, that. what do you think was it in your mindset that didn't allow that risk to stop you from going that direction? Well, um, I um I always go back to and a lot of it really has to do with what's in your DNA. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot to be said for um, if you really if you look at. So I wrote a, I read an article the other day about um, personality types that mm-hmm. that typically go into business or succeed at business or are artistic types. So so there are different archetypes that mm-hmm. are suited to, 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 to certain things. Um, but, but I think that it, it, it has, it, I think it's, it's largely in your DNA. Um, mm-hmm. uh, because for me, um, what was it that made me know is, um, there's a, a quote that I live by and I wrote it down maybe 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this, um, motivational speaker, um, Wayne Dyer, and I, mm-hmm. he's 
he's passed now, but I loved watching his his videos, his 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 um his speeches. He was a mm -hmm. great speaker, and he um was a big proponent of of positivity, manifestation, law of attraction, mm -hmm. things like those. And when I he said something one day, he said, um, whatever you do in life, don't let your, don't die with your music inside of you. Mm. Don't die with your music inside of you. So whatever, I, 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 that's my guiding principle. Whatever is in here that I know that is my talent, my mm -hmm. skills, what I have to offer the world, how I can serve people. I don't want to sit on it. I want mm -hmm. to um, get out there, make sure that I'm sharing it, uh, putting it out in the world. And ultimately, um, it's really your purpose. And, mm -hmm. and it is what makes you happy. And as long mm -hmm. as you're, you're what you're doing is making you happy, you're serving people, you're helping people along the way, mm -hmm. uh, you can't but succeed, you know. Yeah. So, so for me, that that's it's really the guiding principle, combined with, you know, whatever your type is, because you, you have to be of a certain type. Um, mm -hmm. you bring that confidence. You bring that that um, drive um, to what you're doing. Um, and like I said, it can be taught because, you know, there are people out mm -hmm. there who do, do this sort of work, mm -hmm. but, but intrinsically, if you have that in you intrinsically, you're already um, mm -hmm. um, ahead of the game. Yeah. You, you mentioned several times the confidence and I have kind of two questions about it. Um, <laughs> first, did you... As you were on that journey, because as you were talking about making that decision where you pretty much put yourself in a place where there's no there's no going back. I no. make this decision, I commit to it. <laughs> but also you mentioned that you have to be, you have to have this belief in yourself, confidence in yourself, because you know that once you make that decision, I actually stick with it. I believe in myself. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do you did you have doubts along the way or at the beginning? And if you had, how did you deal with them and how did you overcome them um and do you know how somebody can build that confidence where mm -hmm. they maybe doubt themselves less and less and actually be believe in themselves more and more I never doubted myself okay I, I had I had um challenges but I mm -hmm. didn't have doubt mm -hmm. um I, I never doubted myself I knew from I was a small kid um, that I didn't want to work for anyone. And that's why I was never happy in a job. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter how great the job was, how much money I was making. I, I it just, it, it just wasn't my place. I didn't feel like I belonged, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, and even when I had the challenges, um, you know, you don't have the customers you want. You're not making the money that you want. I was still happier than I was making mm. in the job. Um, so I never doubted. Uh, I, I just figured out a way to address mm -hmm. the challenges. Um, and then it, it, you asked me the question uh, before about, um, you know, when you get, the, when you start out and you have those challenges, how do you address them? Mm -hmm. And in, uh, in, going back to do I how do I change how do I adjust do I pivot um that's not what you do mm -hmm. um or that's what I learned because that's what I did don't do that um mm -hmm. start when you start at the beginning keep it simple don't mm -hmm. get it don't make it so complicated yeah. so many people start out in business and immediately they want the big flashy business cards they want flashy stationery, um, they, they want, they want a business, um, um, they want a separate phone for their business, they're doing this, that, and the other, all of that is just not necessary at the yeah. beginning, keep it simple, and keep it basic, and take it a step at a time, mm -hmm. because you're investing money in things that 
are not necessary. Yeah. And I'll use the business cards as an example. You get all these glossy business cards for a great idea that you have. And, and it's not working out the way you think it works. You've invested that money and now it doesn't work. You want to go on to something else and you get a new set of flashy business cards. Mm -hmm. And you're constantly doing that. Whereas if you just, just go out there, go to Office Depot, get some basic business cards, start doing your networking, mm -hmm. start there. You don't have to spend yeah. money going to, uh, um, uh, you know, joining, at least not at the beginning. You should do that later on, by mm -hmm. the way. But yeah. at the beginning, you want to search out free events mm -hmm. because you have no money. <laughs> so you're starting and you have no money. So you should be seeking out resources that are going to mm -hmm. support you yeah. without investing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's, you know, that's what a lot of entrepreneurs do. They want to invest money doing this, that, and the other. Not do you know why? Do you know why they overcomplicate it? Because they want to have the, the Warren Buffett example you want to get here at day yeah. one. They want to automatically have that. Um, Is it like to create that, a sense of accomplishment? Yes. They want to okay. have that aura of success mm -hmm. and accomplishment right at the get go. Mm -hmm. So you go to this event and, you know, you're and you want people to think, oh, this, that and the other. And you're super successful when you're not, mm -hmm. you're just starting out. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have an image because you want to have mm -hmm. that image, but you don't, you don't have to invest money in, in creating that image. Mm -hmm. Or I, not. I was now even thinking it might even be that because you are new and you might not have all that confidence because you're new, you don't really know what to expect. You mm -hmm. might do all these extra things to create some kind of confidence within yourself mm -hmm. um, by using those things, or maybe create some kind of image that you want others to see you by doing these things. But it's 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 interesting that probably most people that are seasoned in business they can see that because <laughs> they probably have gone through similar see things it from a <laughs> mile away. Yes, <laughs> the, con the 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 confidence should come from you. Yeah, it shouldn't be all the trappings that mm -hmm. you're bringing, and and it, it, it's it's um, it's interesting. You started out talking about networking. Um, networking is really not about you. Yeah, it's not about you. It, it's the people that yeah. you meet, and and if if you are in a room networking with people, and you're um, you are of the mindset that. I want to know about that person. I want to know why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. I want to know what made them get into that line of business. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm, how do I, how do I send referrals your way? Mm -hmm. What's a good client for you? Most people would be like, ah, why is she doing that? Why? Mm -hmm. Because their mindset is of me. And I want to be constantly telling people who I am. It's about the I, 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 mm -hmm. I. Um, whereas if you're focused on that person I, and that person's like, wow, this person is amazing. You know, what do you think happens? He remembers you. He or yeah. she remembers you the next day. Hey, I, meet, I met this awesome guy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to be around him. I want to be friends with that guy, mm -hmm. you know, whereas you come in and you're, con you're just talking about yourself. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. and, and you're just um, another person. You're just another, um, uh, another addition of the people who are just there um, peddling business cards. Mm -hmm. But if you're there um, with the mindset of, I, I just, I want to help people. I want to learn about people. I want to connect people mm -hmm. with each other. And, and you start building relationships around yourself. And guess what? M M Mr. Mr. Brown, that you just had a great conversation with, 
when he goes back to his office or his next networking meeting is, hey, I met this awesome guy. I think you guys should meet. Mm -hmm. That's just how it happens. Yeah. And, and you, you and and that's the the part of when you start out. And I don't want people out there thinking, hey, um, you know, it, you're not going to be nervous or you're not going to be scared yeah. at the beginning because you are. But you got to jump in with both feet and you're mm -hmm. not going to get it right the first time. Yeah. So, but after a couple of times, you keep doing it and you keep, it's like me and YouTube. I was terrified the first time. <laughs> the youtube video why because i'd never done it before yeah. but guess what Astra? i was going to do it if it killed me yeah i was going to be successful at it and yeah. i'm getting better and better why mm -hmm. because my mindset is i this is not going to 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 defeat me i'm going yeah. to do it i'm gonna get better at it i'm gonna be the best at it Mm -hmm. So that's the mindset that you have yeah. to have, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to, you're not going to be scared or you yeah. feel like you're failing at the beginning. That's normal, but, but you can't stop. You, you just have to keep doing it. You go to one event, nobody ever calls you back. Um, <laughs> don't say, yeah. oh my God, I was, I sucked and then yeah. not go back just keep going back yeah. because then your face becomes more visible yeah. and, and I think it's I think it's also important to be proactive instead of having this expectation that people will, yeah. will reach out to you Ooh, people will message you 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 are this special person that everybody will remember and send you the yeah. first message and things like that if you are more proactive you you can even create more that sense of control that mm -hmm okay, I connected with this person. They said they will connect with me, but I might as well send message first and yeah. connect with them in case if they forget or they get too busy, anything can happen. And I think when you get more proactive in anything in life, you start to feel more in control. And with that, you start to feel more confidence. Mm -hmm. Then you want to do more and you feel a bit more secure, maybe making those steps mm -hmm. and less afraid because now you can even start to control results a bit better because you actually are the one who is being proactive. Mm -hmm. Every networking expert I know and everyone I know who's successful <laughs> at networking, the fortune is in the follow-up is what they mm -hmm. always say. The fortune is in the follow-up. If you go to a networking event, you're not connecting with people and you're not doing any follow-up, you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. So the fortune is always in the, to your point, yeah. it's in the follow-up. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it, it's, even if it, it's not, um, and it doesn't have to be, you're trying to get business from the person. Mm -hmm. It's about saying, hey, you know, I met you on so-and-so, let's connect, you know, um, how can I um, um, help you in your business? Yeah. We collaborate some, you know, yeah of that nature, but you have got to follow up. When mm -hmm. you leave that networking event, you know, have a list of people that you might have some synergy with. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and even if it's someone in an industry um, that you would never think um, that you would have synergy with, mm -hmm. what, what, do you, what, what do you have to lose? Nothing. Yeah. I had a lady come to my networking group that was into wine. She's a, she, she, um, she's a wine. I don't even know what you call them. Um, that she, she, she has a wine business where they um, curate bottled wine and uh, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's organic and, mm -hmm. and. Um, Doesn't she all, didn't she also say that she creates those, um, for corporate events, yes. some kind of packages, yes. something like that. Yes. And I'm thinking, you know, this lady, I really need to, she really needs to hire me <laughs> because, because, um, you know, she could, there's so much more she could do with her business mm -hmm. um, rather than um, uh, doing corporate events, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if she has a membership or a wine club or whatever, mm -hmm. but that's something she could do. Um, 
a lot of wine people now have um, subscriptions, but she could even take it to another mm -hmm. level, you know, it, it and, and uh, it's, it's, it's all about the people engagement yeah. because um, it, it's not just during the holidays or corporate events that people need wine. You have people who drink wine all the time. Um, and it comes back to creating the expectation we talked about mm, the other day, yeah. when we <laughs> talked about earlier. Yeah. I mean, create, have them uh, create an expectation in the in in your market. Mm -hmm. Hey, you can you know um, my my I have a business. I I just did a business meeting. Send you know send them an appreciation gift, you know mm -hmm. or or know when your client's kids get married or know when someone's celebrating an anniversary, mm -hmm. know X, Y, and Z about the person. Mm -hmm. you, you can, your business can just mm. be stratospheric. If, if you start thinking, don't do what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. look, look for different ways that you can be unique. How to, how to feel comfortable doing something that everybody else doesn't do because then technically you now are slowly starting to stand alone mm -hmm. so how do you even feel comfortable now getting off the usual route and stay confident in yourself by doing something that is completely new potentially in the industry well well, you're not really alone because you're in the same market but you're mm -hmm. different yeah oh, okay um and and how do you feel comfortable well hopefully you would probably have... more like confident comfortable in business i think it's, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of but like comfortable yeah. is not a good word yeah, to be in yeah. i i meant confident yeah yeah so you um and that's a good point that you make and it's scary for for businesses mm -hmm. um and as i said before don't stray too far from from what you're culture and your core values mm -hmm. are but if you how do you um master that um or be confident in in being different because if you're different it, do you ever notice people um are attracted always to new mm -hmm. people are always attracted yeah. to new or they're at least curious about it yes if people are attracted to new mm -hmm. if, if you're creating something that people want not necessarily um need mm -hmm. but what they what they want mm -hmm. and and it's attractive for them it's not it it, it, it you will have no issue um mm -hmm. um connecting with those people because mm -hmm. it, it, and speaking of the wine lady if you're new, and I remember someone who launched, uh, um, I remember that that celebrity that launched that skinny skinny girl. Um, she was selling these skinny girl um, wine in in these little teeny bottles, and she would go to to different stores, different grocery stores, mm -hmm. and events on the weekend, and nobody would, nobody wanted it. <laughs> but but she kept going and now it, it multi-millionaire mm -hmm. and what did what was the catch the skinny part because women want to be able to drink and not gain weight mm -hmm. but but she was alone in that in mm -hmm. that um in that space when she started now you have now it's all over the place you know so so yeah if you if you um if you know what your customer wants and you're comfortable that what you're offering or the idea that you have that's mm -hmm. going to make their product or their service or whatever skill or knowledge they're offering is going to be new um mm -hmm. different set you apart from the competition go for it in mm -hmm. a, in a, do what this lady did test it just like you do with your analytics mm -hmm. test test um, invest and test 
And mm -hmm. if you're if you're if you test it and you see that it's working, give it time though. Don't just mm -hmm. test it for a couple of weeks and decide it's not gonna work. Keep testing it and test it in different ways. Mm -hmm. You can test it directly. You can test it online. You can test it with your family. Test it with your friends. Those are your, this is your first mm -hmm. line of, of, um, of, of, um, of, that's your first market line right there. Friends, family, mm -hmm. acquaintances, test it there. Um, and and if, if they're receptive, then you know you've got something and, and you can take it wider but mm -hmm. you know yeah one uh so, so don't be afraid to be yeah. in space alone because guess what once you're there just like the, that happened with the lady with the wine then everybody will start following you yeah you know? but but for you're the one who who innovated it and and you um you created the expectation within the marketplace and now they know that mm -hmm. ah, that's something that the market wants. Yeah. So everybody jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but even, even decision-making, making a decision, even when you said about that you made that decision to quit the job and focus on, on your mm -hmm. own thing or build your own thing, um, and I, one thing that I have found really interesting about making decisions, and you probably can talk more about this, is that a lot of times people struggle when they think that I have to make the right decision or there's one right decision. And then when they make one decision, even both are technically equal, but then you make this one decision. And many times, instead of committing to that decision that, okay, this is the decision, and I move on with this decision. Mm -hmm. They kind of move on with this decision, but then they look back at the other one thinking, could this decision be better in, if I made that decision? And I think many times there's dabbling between those decisions where you, as you mentioned before, commitment, where you don't really commit to the decision. You kind of make decision, but you're not fully committed to that decision. Mm -hmm. And is that maybe you can talk more about how to improve decision making or how to avoid getting in that situation where you kind of you you made a decision but you really didn't <laughs> you're not committed to the decision yeah exactly um well what is it the decision you're making what is it based on because, i don't know it can be anything no 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 I, I, it's a rhetorical question oh, okay. um, <laughs> um you're making a decision but what are you basing the decision out on um, what, what do you expect to gain from making the decision, that particular decision? Mm -hmm. Um, if, if you, um, if you're thinking, if you've given enough thought to why you're making the decision in the first place, um, how is that decision going to be implemented mm -hmm. and executed? And how is that decision going to benefit your overall um, culture and, mm -hmm. and company? So why are you making the decision? Is it, is it that you need to make a change? Is it that something isn't working and you need to change that? How are you going to implement it? Um, how do you implement that decision. So say, for example, you decide um, you want to hire more people, say, mm -hmm. because you feel as if um, your clients are not being served. So you, you need a larger team. Um, and th that's a decision you make. Yes, I'm going to Mm -hmm. um, expand the team. Um, you start hiring the people because you know that it's good for the, the, um, the overall company. And three, um, is it beneficial? Um, if you've got, if you've answered those questions, 
in the affirmative, then it's the right decision. Mm -hmm. you, you just have to commit to it. But you're correct. Some people make the decision. Then it, once the ball starts rolling, they say, and, and maybe things don't work out the way they Exa exactly when do yeah. based on the decision. Mm -hmm. Then they said, oh, crap, maybe it wasn't the right decision. Mm -hmm. But go back to, to point one. You, your customers are not being properly served. So um, what else could you have done mm -hmm. other than improving the, the expanding the team? It's in the implementation that there is the, that the issue is, why mm -hmm. it's not giving you the result that you thought or think you should be getting from making mm -hmm. that decision. Yeah. And one thing that I uh, have noticed, or even when I make some decisions myself, um, you make that decision. And then instead of focusing on the other one, first you forget about the other one, but then you make this decision the right one. You don't think about whether it's the right one or not, but you do whatever it takes yeah. to make it the right we'll focus one. Focus on exactly, yeah. exactly. If, if you're, if you're um, vacillating between the two, you know, you're, you're not focused on the decision mm -hmm. you've made. You're always thinking, what if, if I had done that, would that yeah. have been, that may be, <laughs> it, it may have been the better yeah. choice, yeah. but, but not necessarily. It's that you haven't committed to your decision. Yeah. And, and you and can't really know which decision is better until you actually have committed to this one, because you haven't really executed properly as you think about the other one at the same time. Yeah, you haven't, you're not giving the energy. Yeah. Energy is a big thing. You're not giving the energy and the commitment and the the you know being being fully in on the decision. If you're if you're mm -hmm. not giving it the energy and your attend uh, your attention is split between what you're doing and what you could have been doing, mm -hmm. then clearly it, it, yeah. it you know it, it's just not gonna yeah. work. How would you, uh, this is something that I, a few years ago, I was really curious about the word commitment because it's not that you are just determined, which is also a powerful thing, but commitment, that's something different level. How would, how would you define commitment in your own words, if you would have to describe it? Oh gosh, that's such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> commitment is being all in mm -hmm. there's no question there's no ifs there's no ands there's no buts mm -hmm. you are all in you uh, they talk about the decision making mm -hmm. you it, it, let's look at it in the term uh in, in terms of a relationship whether it's a business relationship or a personal relationship you you have to be committed and in um, commitment in the sense that um, be of the mindset that just because you're committed doesn't mean it's going to be all rosy all the time. Mm -hmm. But when it's not rosy all the time, you still have to be present yeah. and, and, and persistent. You can't because it's, it's, um, Maybe I, I, one of my colleagues lost his key employee uh, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and and he's um, having a difficult time replacing the person. Um, but when you you know that sort of challenge makes you really question, you know, uh, where's my business going? Um, what damage has this guy done? Um, should I have seen the signs before? Mm -hmm. um, what could I have done differently? All those things. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that he he is not committed yeah. to 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 that area of his business still. Because mm -hmm. he could just say, um, "This person is gone." Um, you know, I, I can't really get someone else with his yeah. skill set to replace it. And just and just throwing the towel, but he's committed to to continuing yeah. on and 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 succeed. Yeah. 
So as I said, and also he, his actions showed that that he's committed. committed. He might and, have some doubts or something like that, but his actions still show that he's committed. Mm -hmm. And and if you we want to use the 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 um, personal relationship as uh, to demonstrate commitment. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the divorce rate now? <laughs> we won't go into that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's a lack of commitment. And and why is that? Because it's too it's been made too easy to throw the towel in. It's too easy to give up. Mm -hmm. Um so it, it, in business, is it is is it going to be so easy if it's so easy for you to give up you shouldn't be in business you should you you can't be in business if it's if if when the going gets tough mm -hmm. you want to throw in the towel that's not commitment whether personal or professional you mm -hmm. have to um as i said before you have to be willing to risk it all uh, a lot of people don't risk relationships because they don't want to get hurt mm -hmm. and they don't want to risk businesses because they don't want to fail. But you have to be willing to take that risk. You have to be willing to, to, to endure the pain mm -hmm. to, to get, to get over to the other side where it's all rosy and the grass is green. Mm -hmm. But if you're not willing to take the risk, because guess what, when you take the risk, that's when you realize that's when you you're able to determine whether it's right or not that mm -hmm. so you're dating a guy and um and you know or or you meet someone you don't want to be in a relationship because you don't want to risk it because yeah. you don't want to endure the pain if it doesn't work out but as they say you have to kiss a lot of frogs to find the prince yeah <laughs> so <laughs> So you have to be willing to risk and you have to be committed, like you say, yeah. to the decision, to the risk taking, to the decision making, to, um, to having your company achieving longevity. You have to mm -hmm. be willing to be all in all the time. You can't be just be one foot is over here, a la the decision making. Yeah. <laughs> one foot is over here and one foot is over yeah. here you have to jump in with both feet and that leaves me to thinking about safety because then you think that <laughs> if i still have this decision i'm still in a safe place if this decision safe, fails safe, safety or complacency Astra. <laughs> exactly and and that's 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 what I was, as you were speaking, I was even, I, I wanted to ask you even about the risk because risk is completely the opposite of safety. And when you go into business or do your own thing, it's, it's risky. There's a lot of risk involved in that. There's yeah. almost no safety in it apart from, I don't know, just trusting yourself or I don't even, I can't even think of and, any and proper also, safety. <laughs> that's, that's why it takes a special personality to mm. succeed in business. Because um, most people like safety. Yeah. They, they prefer to be safe. They don't want to risk. Mm -hmm. so, so you have to be a special personality to, to be willing to, to go there. Mm -hmm. Because it's not easy. Oh. And, 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 and it comes with a lot of um, consequences. And, and not all are good. <laughs> it, it, you know you could the, the consequence could be that you're 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 amazingly successful but the consequence in your mind could be oh i, I can't risk it because that I'm, I'm gonna fail well if you think that you're already failing yeah you okay so be, you have to be of the mindset yeah. that it's this is it for me yeah so how do you see risk Oh gosh, risk is is um, putting everything on the line, mm -hmm. um, and you know that saying that you shouldn't lend money to friends um, because um, there's no guarantee you're going to get it back. Mm -hmm. um, they say 
if a friend wants money from you, it's better to give it to them rather than lend it because chances mm -hmm. are you're never going to get it back. <laughs> So, so when you when you're taking a risk, you have to go into it thinking, I may not get it back. I may not get the return. Um, so but in a way that, without like any but expectations. Why, but why would you want to take the risk if you have no expectations? It comes back to the commitment to the mm. purpose. And, and if you're doing the commitment to the purpose correctly, and it, the risk that is attached to that is less scary. Mm -hmm. But but it goes back to, to putting everything in place the way they should be in place, having the pillars set up right, having the foundation set up right. So when you're putting, when you're risking everything to implement all of those pillars, foundation, culture, core values, the risk you're taking doesn't feel like risk to you. It feels mm -hmm. more like a commitment. Mm -hmm. It feels more like this is my purpose and I have to do whatever I need to do to make mm -hmm. it come to life. So, so, so for me, um, I don't look at risk as risk in yeah. the, in the, that, that's why I asked. Yeah. In the traditional sense of the word, mm -hmm. because it, it, it's, um, as as someone who is um, a business owner or entrepreneur, um, you have to be willing. If you're not willing to risk it all, uh, and I'm using the word risk advisedly, because for me, I don't look at it as a risk. Yeah. I look at it more as an investment mm -hmm. and a com and my commitment and mm -hmm. my um, my persistence to achieving the goal. Because um, if everything, and, and, and that's why I'm so um, passionate about what I want to do for businesses in terms of, of uh, a longevity blueprint and strategy, mm -hmm. that if you're setting everything up right, risk becomes um, more of your investment. And of mm -hmm. course, People who are in, in investment will say investment is a risk <laughs> because there's no guarantee you'll get the return or get your money back. Mm -hmm. But the, the chances of you um, failing is less likely if yeah. you have these um, pillars and foundations set in place. Could it be that the amount of risk you are willing to take shows how much you actually believe in yourself absolutely absolutely because the less you believe in yourself the less risk you're willing to take or you will feel okay with taking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's absolutely true um i mentioned um a, a few minutes ago about um uh doing um, free events and networking and mm -hmm. uh, I'm big on investing in oneself mm -hmm. because if you if you're not investing in yourself at all times um, and in and are constantly learning and improving um, you're of no value to to the people you're serving mm -hmm. so so yeah it, 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 I, I think that's very important. Yeah. And even as you were talking about risk, I was thinking that as you were describing it, that you might just see it as it's just part of the puzzle. It's it's part of the process in a way that yeah. it's not something that's, you know, like unexpected or anything like that. It's it's pretty much like part of the formula. It's you have to take risk. And you hit the nail on the head. It's part of the formula. You yeah. cannot be in business and not be um, not not be aware that there's a level of risk involved. Mm -hmm. Do we know of any other company? Do we know of any company in the world that that didn't take a risk mm -hmm. and, and are constantly taking risks? Yeah. Because if you don't take a risk, you're not going to grow. You're not going to improve. Mm -hmm. As I was saying, you have to make that investment in yourself yeah. 
in your employees, in your, um, you know, improving your supply chain. Um, mm -hmm. Look at your your um, developing global partners, taking on new 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 businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, do you want to be um, be a, um, a not just a um, a business but an empire? How about mm -hmm. building an empire? <laughs> you know, are we up for that? Oh, how, for how sure. About building an empire. You know, you gotta you, successful people and successful businesses think big, think huge, mm. think big picture, you know, and, and, and that's the mindset you have to be in. And, and as I said, it takes a, a, a um, part of the equation, as you so rightly said, is you have to have, uh, um, be of a certain mindset and be of mm -hmm. a certain type of person to really be bulletproof. Mm -hmm. You're one of those people, it doesn't matter what comes at you, you're still standing. Yeah. And, 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 and that's what it takes, really, yeah. to, to be successful in business. Yeah. You can't, if not, nothing should phase you. Yeah. You know, you, 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 it, it comes and you're like, oh, how do I find the opportunity in this challenge? Yeah. The, the, something comes at you that is not what you were expecting. Okay, what's good about this? Yeah. You know, I've lost this client. Why did I lose this client? Mm -hmm. um, ask the client, what were you not yeah. happy about? Don't just say, okay, you know, on to the next. And that's a big mistake that a lot of businesses make. They lose clients, but they don't bother to ask the client, mm -hmm. what were you not happy about? Why did you go to someone else? What was it that they were offering that was better than what I was mm -hmm. doing? you because if you if that client has a problem with something that you did or didn't do um, chances are there are going to be more clients that will eventually yeah. leave you because of that so ask the question um yeah. what what was i not doing for you yeah and be open to the answer as well <laughs> that react exactly <laughs> you said exactly correct <laughs> Don't just uh, don't just get the answer and not do anything about it. Mm -hmm. You know, be open to the answer and say, "Team, <laughs> how did we drop this ball? You know, mm -hmm. how do we make this better?" Yeah. As we were talking about the risk, then I started <laughs> to think about the next step, which, when you take risk, you put mm -hmm. yourself in situation of uncertainty. So, how mm -hmm. do you deal with uncertainty? Because then you I think when you get in a situation where you deal with that uncertainty, it's harder to predict things a lot of times. So how do you manage that? Well, um, personally, um, there's always um, days when you're uncertain or, or uh, that are more challenging mm -hmm. than others. Um, how do you deal, how do I deal with uncertainty? Um, it, it, it's, it's not that simple, <laughs> um, because if I'm, if I'm uncertain about something, uh, there's a problem <laughs> because the goal is to always be certain about what you're doing, but, but that's, that's a panacea that that's not like reality you know, you're going to be un uncertain about certain things. Well, well, first I'm going to, I'll ask myself, which is, which is when I do when I get anxious about things is um, why am I uncertain about it? Hmm. Um, give me an example, Astra, about a time when you were uncertain about something. Oof. Um probably even when when I was trying to get to Canada and I was waiting and waiting and waiting and then when they rejected me I'm now in a situation where I was kind of waiting and I had this expectation to go there now this is ended and you kind of enter the place of uncertainty mm -hmm. you know I find that uncertainty comes from a, a, a lack of commitment hmm. and, and it's about it, a big part of it um 
comes from the energy that you're putting into it. And by that, I mean, um, do you ever notice that when you're, when you've made a decision to do something and you, you are not fully committed to it or you don't want to do it, or you're uncertain about it, it doesn't happen. It, oh, it, for sure. it, it's about what, um, it's about your, uh, you're manifesting the uncertainty, hmm. you know, so, so you're, you're, you're unsure about a decision that you've mm -hmm. made. And, and because you're so unsure about it, what are you doing? You're feeding the uncertainty mm -hmm. by saying, oh, I don't want to do this. Well, if you don't want to do this, then it's not going to happen. Yeah. But if you, if you're, um, if you flip the, the script, you flip the coin and you're like, okay, um, I'm sufficiently confident that this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Then the energy you're feeding into it is it's a good thing. And you, and then good things start to happen mm -hmm. surrounding it, but it's all about mindset. Yeah. If you're, if you're uncertain about it, then what you're, you're feeding it negative um, thoughts. So go back to what you're uncertain about and start thinking about what about it is it that you think is not good for the, um, for your goal. Mm -hmm. It's not the right thing to be doing to get here. Yeah. It's not the right thing to be doing because of X, mm -hmm. so, because if you're uncertain about something, then did you already make the decision and now you want to switch or mm -hmm. you didn't make a decision and you're uncertain about what decision, what yeah. direction to go in. So go back to what the decision is that mm -hmm. you're uncertain about. What is it? What is that um, thing? Whether it's, I'm going to fly to Canada, but I don't want to go because I'm scared of flying. Or oh, no, the thing, the thing was that it was outside of my control whether okay. I get visa or not. So okay. what I meant is less about, let's say you are uncertain about certain decision, but more mm -hmm. about, let's say you now enter a situation, no matter how you got in there, but you get in a situation of uncertainty in a way outside of your comfort zone, not mm -hmm. even outside of your comfort zone, but because even myself, I didn't feel as much outside of my comfort zone as it happened or as I got to know that, let's say, visa is rejected, things like that. But it's more about you get in situation of uncertainty and it's pretty much like, how do you deal with that situation of uncertainty? But it's a it, bit harder it, to predict things. If it's not harmful, Astra, to the long-term goal, hmm. then, then um, whatever you're uncertain about, I, I say face it. Yeah. Just, just go for it because it, 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 one of two things is going to happen. You're going to gain confidence from facing it head, head on, yeah. or you're going to learn something from it. Yeah. And you will so, get confidence from that lesson. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so it, it goes back to, you know, you're a rookie networker yeah. and you go into a room with all these supposedly successful yeah. people and you're scared and you're not sure if you want to go in just jump in yeah. but if you're uncertain i say yeah. if if it's not going to if it's not a situation that's detrimental mm -hmm. to you that's going to be harmful yeah. just face it headlong yeah. just jump right in and like i said one of two things are going to happen you're going to figure out that it's the wrong thing yeah. or it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. This, this makes me think of one thing that uh, I, I recently was talking to somebody about that things are hard until they aren't. So in the beginning, when you start doing things, they feel hard. It feels really uncomfortable. But then mm -hmm. even, even networking. In the beginning, you don't really know what to say. How do you start a conversation? And then you pretty much like, how do you talk to a stranger that you don't really know? You don't know what to expect. But then mm -hmm. the more you do, the easier it gets. And it's mm -hmm. like that with everything. It's hard until it exactly. isn't. <laughs> exactly. And therein is what you talk about, the uncertainty. You just got to jump yeah. in. 
and you got to keep doing it because you're exactly correct. When I first started networking, I was rubbish at networking. Yeah. And uh, um, the pandemic has changed so much um, for me in terms of networking, mm -hmm. because I've learned so much more about how to um, build relationships rather than worrying about getting, uh, I got to get a business, yeah. got to get an appointment. I got to get this guy's business. I have to make money, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. If you build those relationships, the money are going to come. Yeah. And, and it's going to be exponential as compared to you're getting just that one business, you know, yeah. that one appointment and that one um, contract or whatever. It, it's exponential yeah. when, you, when you're creating that, that, um, that that's, um, relationship, building uh, a connection, building your community yeah. around yeah. you. You, you built a community that these are people you can depend on yeah. and you don't have to sell these people anything. All you have to let them, all you have to do is let them know what you need yeah. and vice versa. They let you know what they need and, yeah. and, and you can't help but succeed in that kind of environment. Exactly. Speaking of communities, where can people <laughs> find you? Where can they get the information about what you do, what you offer, things like that? Well, I am, uh, my website is salomichung.com. Um, I have a membership, salomichung.com slash membership. And uh, what I do is I, I, I have many talks, kind of like what we did here today, but I do weekly videos mm -hmm. um, that, that addresses a particular area of business. And it's mm -hmm. really about transformation. It's really about taking your business from where it is to where it needs to be um, along the road to mm -hmm. longevity. So um, that's my membership. I'm on. You can find me on Instagram yeah. if you if you type in my name. Same on Facebook. Um, I um, I also am on LinkedIn. I do a weekly newsletter on LinkedIn. So if you connect with me, you'll have access to my um, newsletter. Um, you can also um, find my book on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always forget to plug the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find it on Amazon. Um, for your um, listeners, Austria, if they um, if they schedule an appointment with me, um, they can, I'll give 50, I'm giving 50% of my membership. Mm -hmm. Um, and as I said, you have access to weekly videos. I do a monthly master class and these videos are there in perpetuity. You can go back to mm -hmm. them over time. If you want to refresh something or, um, mm -hmm. share something with someone else, so there's a lot of value in that. And I also have a Facebook group. Um, so mm -hmm. that, that that's I will have it all linked in yeah. notes below so that people can find you everywhere and anywhere where they want to want yeah. where they want to connect, find you, get the information. Um, but uh, it was it was great talking to you. I, I think know. every time when we connect, we just have <laughs> You just have amazing conversations. Amazing. We could talk about this on and on and on because um, there, there is so much to unpack yeah. about um, how you should um, be looking at your business from a, a longevity point of view. Um, because, it, you know, transformation, uh, uh, that's something that people throw around nowadays. You know, it's all about transformation. But what does transformation mean to a business owner? Yeah. It, it could be that however you've been conducting your business is rubbish and you, mm -hmm. and, and you need to um, start looking at doing things differently. Mm -hmm. And notice I didn't say changing things. Yeah. I said looking at it differently, mm -hmm. um, keeping your culture intact, keeping your foundation intact, but mm -hmm. looking at it through different eyes. Yeah. And, and that's what I offer to, mm -hmm. to the clients. Yeah. 
Is there any last thoughts or anything that you want to leave um, our listeners with? Uh, well, I would say um, as a business owner, um, well, 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 let me let me rephrase. Um, uh, the the thought I would like to leave all business owners is be be open. Mm-hmm. Don't um, don't rest on your laurels. Yeah. Uh, always um, be curious mm-hmm. about new things, new ideas, new markets, new ways of doing things. Not not changing your company, but incorporating those things that are. Mm-hmm new and different um Mm -hmm. and and let's use technology as an example um most of us had no clue about zoom meetings or (laughs) or or those things before before covid but it's forced us to to adapt Mm -hmm. Um, so i would say um look at the world Always look, always be looking at the world with with accepting eyes. Mm-hmm. Always be curious. Always mm-hmm. be innovating. Always be questioning. Mm-hmm. Always be exploring. Yeah. So that's what I would say. Don't don't get complacent and rest on your yeah. laurel, because that's part of the excitement too yeah. of having a business and watching it grow and and have longevity. Mm-hmm. Is, is is just looking at things always from a fresh perspective mm-hmm. i love it i love it well thank you for coming on it was this was awesome having you on i know it was amazing and and two hours is flown by <laughs> <laughs> without me even thinking oh my god <laughs> two hours this is amazing this was amazing